Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take some of your questions and answer them directly. The question of another reunion brings up another question we get asked a lot, which is in the later reunions, the inconsistency about my children, that I couldn't have any more children and suddenly I have two more children. Yeah, that John Curtis was never spoken about as to where he was and what happened to him. Ben and Cindy's children, that one of them just went poof and the other one supposedly died, but we never said why. When we got those scripts and we saw all of that, it was very confusing to the cast too. And we actually did, to the degree that we were able to, reached out and said, these are inaccurate. And this is what really happened. And basically the response we got was, oh, no one will remember, no one will notice. We know our fans, we know they'll notice. But again, as an actor, you don't really, you can say things, but it's not up to us. We don't have final say on anything. So it was, it was different writers. Um, there were some other producers involved in it. So somewhere along the line, and the network has a lot of say in things, somewhere along the line, it was determined that that wasn't an important enough point to go back and fix it. So that's what happened with that. We don't really have an understanding of why. There you go. Peggy asked, being there were so many scenes being shot with different actors and not necessarily in order, were you able to picture the entire storyline? Yeah, I would read the entire script to start with. And when I would then take a look at what scenes were being filmed the next day, I would look at where they sat within the story. And as I prepared for the scene, I would take into account what had already happened to my character, what would impact that moment in time in the story for the scene that I was filming. So yes, I would keep the entire story in my mind and try to make sure that my performance reflected what had already occurred to my character and the family at the time we were shooting. She also asked, did this experience teach me to be a director? I think everything connected with doing the Waltons helped inform me as a director, working with incredible directors who had amazing history and body of work that they had done. I learned, even if I wasn't aware of it, I learned so much from working with these other directors, what I thought they did really well, what I felt I would have preferred they do differently. Uh, that definitely impacted me as a director. What happened with the camera, watching the crew, the cinematographer, the camera operator, everything I learned from being part of that and watching how the crew worked, other actors, how they worked, uh, and of course the writing as well, how a story was told and then watching the completed episodes and how things were edited together, understanding how we put scenes together from shooting wide shots and then how we would go in and do the various different close-ups, which close-ups would be chosen, what angles they'd be shot from. All of that was a hands-on education in filmmaking and directing. So uh, without all of that, I never would have had the courage to become a director myself. So another reason I am so grateful for my time on the Waltons. This question is from Mimi. Who was late? Hmm. Uh, I think, I think most of us at some, you know, had some reason or another why we might've been late at some time, heavy traffic, you know, live in LA, a lot of traffic. Um, but as a general rule, this was not a cast that was, late and made people wait. You know, we had call times, they were important and we tried, everybody tried to be on time. Some people were really good about always being early and others, you know, were kind of on time. And then, you know, there might be the a little bit late here or there, but nothing that was really a problem. To the set, um, that varied greatly also. Um, as we got further into the seasons, uh, there became sort of a little bit of a gamesmanship about 
arriving on the set, particularly like with kitchen scenes, because they had to gather at least 11 characters most of the time. And the kids were in school. So I think that's part of what started the issue was that they wanted to give us as much time in school as possible because we were required to get three hours a day. Uh, so they tried not to pull us out until they had to. So a lot of times they would get all of the adults in and then go get the kids. Uh, where I think sometimes the adults were like, why are we sitting around here when everybody isn't here? So then I think they started saying, well, we'll bring the kids in and then we'll bring the adults in. And we'd arrive and go, why are we here? We could have been in school. And so there got to be this, this little game that went on of, and if everybody didn't sort of arrive at the same time, then people might go, well, why am I waiting? I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee. Or, so people would start wandering off. So I can only imagine the challenge for the assistant directors who had to gather us up because it truly was like herding cats sometimes. Not out of any malicious intent, just, it just was. And I think for those of us who were younger, you know, some of these things just didn't didn't really even occur to me. You know, after a while, you get very comfortable on a set. So I admit I wasn't always thinking of the best interests of the director and the crew and the way in which I might inconvenience them by wandering off. So I apologize to anybody connected with the crew or the cast or the production who sees this for not being having that much foresight at the time. And ever since then, as I have begun to recognize more of it from the other side, I do my best to always be there. And if I have to wait, I wait and I do it graciously or as graciously as I can. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the last question Mimi had was, was Ellen grumpy in real life? No, she wasn't. I mean, the thing about our cast is because we were really like a family, we saw people on their good days, their bad days, things were happening in their lives and their, you know, in their personal lives with their own families. Um, I mean, we went through a lot together during the series. You know, there were, there were, you know, there were deaths, there were divorces, there were marriages, there were health issues. There were, you know, we, Ellen Corby, Will Gear, you know, we lost people. It was, it was a lot to go through and it was very much like a real family. And for us, the kids, we were very close. I mean, we went to lunch together every day. You know, I saw more of them during the time we were filming, the, those nine months out of the year, than I did my own brother and sister. And same thing with the rest of them, or my friends. So we did things together off, off set as well. We, you know, we did publicity events, we did parades together. And we sometimes just did, did things for fun together. So as with real siblings, we didn't always get along. There were times where I was mad at one or the other of them, but didn't mean I didn't still love them and that I didn't still feel close to them. It never ended a relationship. It never ended a friendship. It was always like, ah, I'm mad at you. And, you know, and I knew if I said something or snapped that, you know, the next day would be fine. You know, my a couple days, whatever. There was a period of time I was closer to some than the others because of the age. You know, when I was 14, 15, you know, Cammie was, you know, seven or eight. Well, I didn't have a lot in common with her. But towards the end of the show, where I was in my early 20s and she was in her, you know, 16, 17, that's not such a big difference. You have a lot more in the way that you can relate to each other. So I was closer to some of the younger ones later on when we were had more life experience we could share. Uh, whereas early on, I was closer with the ones that were closer to my own age. Uh, so the same thing with the parents. Early on, they were the they were adults and we were kids. So I didn't relate to them just as a friend like I did with the other kids. They were also adults and sort of parental figures or whatever. Um, I was very close with Ellen. Uh, she kind of mentored me a lot. Um, and Will gave us all advice and, and as, you know, as did Michael and Ralph at times, but I became closer with Michael and Ralph as I became more of an adult and could re relate to them more as adult to adult and particularly after the series ended. 
So, you know, interesting dynamic. So was Ellen grumpy? Yeah, I mean, she may have been, but I, she wasn't predominantly a grumpy person. She was much more, you know, she had a lot more humor and, uh, and a lot of sides to her personality than the, the things you saw sometimes with, with grandma. She just was a very astute actress who made choices about that character that I think were really great for for the character and for the show and the dynamics of the show. So thank you for those questions. And I'll gather some more of your questions and I'll do another one of these Q&A sessions. So put your questions in the comments below. I'll grab as many of them as I can that I haven't covered already and we'll do some more. I'll see you next time behind the scenes of the Waltons. <laughs>